straight line method, um, production or output method, as well as uh, using the expected number of hours in allocating the cost of the asset over its useful life. So this time we will be discussing other methods, particularly the sum of the year's digit. We will be using the same problem, so that it's easier for you to compare the difference between uh, those methods previously discussed. So we are still using Quarantino Company as our example. The same cost, 845000 residual value of 45, useful life of five years. These uh, service hours and units to be produced will not be needed anymore. And it's still purchased January 1, 2019. There are assets that produces more in the earlier part of its useful life. So for example, when you purchase car to be used as a taxi or for rent, car for rent, we are expecting that these cars will produce more income in the earlier part of its useful life as uh, lesser repairs are required. So cars are expected to be operating efficiently uh, when newly purchased. Parang X mo lang yan. Pakitang gila sa una, kalaunan, nagbabago. Nawawala ang performance and eventually, talagang wala na. Wala. Wala na. Nawawala na. Okay, let's continue. Sum of the year's digit method. Okay. It is called the sum of the year's digit because we are using the sum of the year's digit. To better understand it, let's look at, let's look at this example. Say, if we purchase a car that with a useful life of five years, it's just an example. I know some of you are using your cars for 10 years now. Sana all my car. For example, the useful life of a car is five years. In 2019, its useful life is still five years. After a year, its useful life is now four years. Adiba? Kailan na di calculator? Sakla. Sige. 2021, three years. 2022 and so on, 2023. Our sum of the year's digit is 15. The method we, are, we will be using is sum, it's called the sum of the year's digit because the sum of the useful life is the denominator and the useful life here is the numerator when we allocate the cost of the asset. So, we create a fraction. Again, this is the numerator. This is the denominator when we allocate the cost. So our fraction there is 5 over 15, 4, 3, 2, 1, respectively. Let's use this in our problem. In 2029, we will be using 5 over 15 times the depreciable cost. Okay, let's make it clear. Its acquisition cost is 845000 We subtracted the 45000 scrap value or salvage value. So we get the 800000 We are still using 800000 the depreciable cost. There are other methods of depreciation where we are using the carrying the acquisition cost instead of the depreciable cost as our base. Okay, let's discuss that in part three. For now, let's stick with the depreciable costs. Okay, so five over 15 here in year one or 2019 times 800,000, that's 266. So that's your depreciation expense for 2019. So 
The same with our method, uh, accumulated depreciation is depreciation for the year, then this is depreciation for year one and year two, then this is depreciation for year one, two, and three, respectively. Okay, so since we are allocating the cost of the asset, the depreciable cost, at the end of its expected life, the carrying amount is still equal to the scrap value of the asset. So I hope I made clear the fractions we are using uh, based on the sum of the year's digit. Okay, so again, we use sum of the year's digits for assets whose performance are better in its earlier, in the earlier part of its useful life. So we are just doing a proper matching of the revenue generated versus the cost of uh, the asset. So if you can see here, higher depreciation are charged over in its early part, sorry, higher depreciations are charged at the early part of its useful life and vice versa, lower depreciation are charged at the later part of the life of the asset. Okay, let's continue. How about, okay, how about assets with an estimated useful life of 20 years? If we go back here, computing the SYD, we have to add 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So how about it's 20 years? How about if it's 50 years? Okay, again, you can be smart. Oh, sorry. You can be hardworking and you just write there 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. Or we will just ask the help of the mathematicians to come up with who we will just think those mathematicians who came up with this formula to solve for the SYD. So their formula is SYD is equal to life or the estimated life of the asset times life plus one, constancy one. Life times life plus one divided by two. So you have two constant here, one and two here. So life times life plus one over two. So applying this concept in our previous example, so your SYD is sum of the year's digit. The sum of the year's digit here is the denominator, okay? Again. So we have, for in our example, it's five years. So it's five times five plus one. So it's six. Times five, 30 over two is 15. Okay, so now let's try for 20. So it's 20 plus one, 20 times 20 plus one over two. So that's 210. Okay, let's continue. Sum of half years digit. How about if our problem is, we'll be using the same concept, the same company, except Quarantino purchased a machinery for 845,000 with an estimated useful life of five years. So how are we going to allocate the 0.5 here? To solve this problem, we have to multiply its life by two. So we have to multiply its, its useful life by two. So we now have two times half years times two is, sorry, two and a half years, which is 2.5 years times two is five. So you now have to use five. Then going back to our depreciation, again, um, we just use the doubled life. This is now the doubled life. Then we will compute again the SYD, so we will be getting again 15. Okay, but the difference here is, remember the life of the asset is only 2.5. We just doubled 
to, to allocate for this half-life for the 0.5 years there. So the effect is in 2019, our depreciation is, it's 5 over 15 times 800, which is 266. And another fraction, 4 over 15 times 800,000. So you have, you will be using two fractions. So our depreciation is 480. So although we multiply our original life, which is 2.5 by 2, but we are using two fractions to allocate the cost of the asset. Okay, so in 20, 2020, we'll be following the same. Uh, 3 over 5 and 2 over, uh, 3 over 15 and 2 over 15 times the depreciable cost. So you have the total depreciation for that year is 2667. So remember, the life of the asset is only 2.5. So one year, one year. So we have only one fraction left. So you have 53, So that's how we do um, SYD if our assets has a half year life. No. Okay. Or life with uh, a decimal point. Okay. How about those, how do we apply SYD if the asset is not purchased on January 1. So we will be using fractional depreciation. Again, we will be using the same problem. So it's easier for us to compare those different um, depreciation methods. This time, Quarantino Company. Okay, let's go back to the original five years life. We will be emphasizing the date it's, it is purchased. So this time, the machinery is purchased on July 1. So how do we use SYD uh, for this setup where the asset is not purchased at the beginning or end of the year? So what we will be doing is, again, we solve for the SYD. So it's still five years. So our sum of the years digit, which is the denominator of the fraction, is 15. Then we will go back to our depreciation table. In 2019, we purchased the asset on July. Therefore, we can only uh, record depreciation from July to December. So our depreciation for 2019 is 800,000 times 5 over 15, but times half, because we can only record depreciation from the purchase date, which is July, up to December. So our depreciation expense is 133 for 2019. For the year 2020, our 5 over 15 fraction is only used half of the year. Therefore, in 2020, we have to use the other half. That's for January to June. <clears throat> and we will be using the next fraction, 4 over 15, for July to December. So for 2020, you now have two parts of depreciation. Uh, 1334 the balance for this fraction 5 over 15 and the first half of 4 over 15 here. So the total depreciation for the year is 240,000. So in our income statement, the depreciation expense that will appear is 240,000. So our accumulated depreciation here is previously 133 plus the 240 so it's 373 here. And your carrying amount here is previous balance less depreciation for the year of 240. So you have 471,066.67. Uh, okay. 
So the same uh, will happen in 2021. The balance 4 over 15 will be used half, first half of the year, January to June, and another fraction will be used the 3 over 18. So we have two parts again of depreciation. Add this to get the depreciation for the year. The same will happen in 2022. Uh, the balance 3 over 15, then we will be using the next 2 over 25. The same in 2023, 2 over 15. Since uh, 1 over 15 here is only half of the year, so we have to continue this depreciation up to 2024. So that's what we'll be doing when we purchase the asset between calendar dates, meaning not January 1, not December 31. So thank you very much for uh, watching our videos. Uh, hopefully you learned something from our video today. And you stay tuned for part three of our depreciation discussion, where we will be discussing other depreciation methods other accelerated depreciation methods as well as um, disposal of assets and change of depreciation methods. So thank you very much.